I'm a nanoparticle person. Biological systems in the environment. Cell membrane model interaction. I make sustainable plastics. I get to use pencil and paper, computers. The impacts of emerging contaminants on freshwater organisms. Increasingly, we're living in a world where we're called on to make better use of scarce resources. And one of the unique features of nanotechnology is that it, it basically allows us to make better use of the scarce resources that we have. One of the things that we would like to be able to do is make sure that we understand the entire ramifications all the way from cradle to grave to what do these materials do. Uh, nanotechnology is basically the study of small things, smaller than about 100 nanometers which is about a hundredth the width of a human hair. Nanotechnology starts with nanomaterials that have a function relevant in technology. I think it's important to have sustainable nanotechnology for the same reason that it's important to have sustainable anything else. People want brighter screens on their laptops, they want longer lasting batteries, they want the next generation of sustainable vehicles. So the idea here is proactive sustainable design so that we don't end up with the next DDT or asbestos on our hands. What we're really doing is putting in place a set of fundamental chemical and physical principles that allow us to understand what do nanomaterials do if they get out into the environment and how can we use that information to develop and make new materials that have better properties. Our center is a little bit of a misnomer. It's actually a distributed set of scientists located at 12 different institutions around the country. Scientists with diverse backgrounds trying to attack a really big problem. It's sort of like having multiple startup companies that are geographically dispersed, you know, in a way. You have this cross-pollination of ideas that you don't get any other way. And actually the expertise that's required is significantly more than any one person has really been trained to do. This collaborative nature of the center allows us to ask questions that we weren't able to ask before. Putting those pieces together, we can solve a problem that is much more complicated, much more difficult than any one of us could. I'm making a difference in the community, but not on a local level, on a global level. The center is a really great place to do research. I get to work with these awesome colleagues, and for my students, I think they benefit tremendously. It helps them to make the connections. They have the opportunity to essentially be mentored by a huge number of experts in addition to all of their peers. The big goal is design rules, design principles, things that you can use as you're thinking ahead about designing new materials. We're now living in a nano world, so what does that mean? We cannot forget that everything we make now will be tomorrow's trash or tomorrow's opportunity for another material. These impacts are probably in like a long term, right? We probably won't see something right away. Ultimately, what the center is doing is critical to try and protect the environment in the future. And by putting in place the science and the fundamental chemical principles, then we are contributing to that societal goal. And ideally what we want to do is use our power as chemists to design a, and, and implement a better world.